All right, Raskatron. Thank you so much for coming over. I really appreciate it. Yes, it's been a while since we met up like this. Yeah, it's been some time, and we haven't had the chance to meet up like we once did before. At least what four months has passed since the last time I've done a video log. I I am going to be preparing a meal for us today since I'm trying to get my city a little more established. I wanted to have a delicacy, a type of food that would be my national dish or something like that. Like what countries usually have? Right. Yes, that. So how have you been, Raske? Well, things have been good. I can't complain. Though, uh, if there's one thing that I've been worrying about, it's what the others have been asking me, and it's regarding you. <laughs> That's actually why I called you over here as well, so that we can clear up some misunderstandings regarding certain rumors that have been going around about me. And I, I don't know, I don't want anything to come between us, so I decided I want to tell you as much as I know at this point. Because as much as I've been monitoring Loki Buns, you've been a little too paranoid about Steve, and that's coming from me, who's been captured twice by him. I can see why you might think that, but I can say without a doubt that I have not. I haven't even seen Steve in the longest. I don't know even know where he has been. I believe the person who saw him last was Loki Bonds, but since he lost his memory, we haven't been able to figure out where Steve is. You know, I do admit that I've been a little carried away with where Steve is and what he might be doing, especially alone because Loki Bonds is not the henchman anymore. And now monstrosity is missing. What? That's the first I'm hearing of yes, that. Yes, for a few months now. For so long? Right? Honestly, one of the reasons I haven't been releasing video logs like I usually did before was because I feel like I'm being watched and I didn't want Steve to be ahead of me in that regard. All right, Raskatron, are you ready to eat? Let's do it, bro. This is my country's national dish, rabbit stew. Nice. Let's dig in, shall we? Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that was really good, right? Best thing I've eaten in a while. And apparently it's very good on saturation, so you'll feel full for a long time before you need to eat again. We should do this again. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for dropping by, Raskatron. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man. I will, I'll keep you up to date if I hear anything from Monstrosity, because I, I've been looking for him. I've been trying to figure out where he is. I've been asking the villagers, but nothing yet. All right, then I'm off. If anything, I'll drop by by our base later. Yeah, I'll be there. Bye, Raskatron. Bye, see you later. Well, he's in a hurry. Guess he's busy today. Hello, real world spectators. My name is Rain, and welcome to another video log of my life on the Isekai realm. This is video log number 54, and a great deal of time has passed since the last one, right? If you recall, the last time we actually invited a villager from each of the different biomes to become a part of the city council that I put together for Asahi City, which is the name of the city that I went for for my domain, right? And one of the main purposes of this is to have each of them invite some of their own villagers over to become a part of the development of the city by building establishments of work and trade and also improving infrastructure while simultaneously having a much needed influx of villager immigrants whose workforce can definitely help establish an economy and have it flourish as well. This was was literally my plan of action two years ago and it's finally coming together. We'll have villagers of all walks of life, all types of professions like fishermen, we'll have construction workers, we'll have street vendors, we'll have restaurateurs as well. Remember when I built a donburi and sushi place here? Well, I'm happy to announce it has become the main attraction for villagers to drop by actually so this is like the first place that they come in order to get to know the place and hang out for a bit as they're working and doing whatever they need to do in order to get established in order to become comfortable in Asahi city just as you see here we have a ramen vendor here delicious fast food for those on a break before they go back to work it's the best ramen in town well let me have a seat here this is Ichisan, the owner of this fine establishment it's the only ramen in town. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, it's the best by default, I guess. <laughs> but little things like these, places like these are what people are going to be finding attractive. So if we want growth, if we want traffic in our city, that's what we need to do. Here we have fresh sushi sold every day from the sushi chefs. And of course, like everywhere ever, not everyone is going to want to work. And honestly, I have no issue with that. I believe that they need to take the time out to figure out what they want to do if they want to do anything at all. Because not every job is suited for everyone. There's a place for us now. Yeah, it's called the Nether. <laughs> I, know, I know that sounds like they're talking about hell, as in nitwits belong in hell, but in fact that's not the case they might find it interesting indeed to become a part of the nether research program oh look a cute little doggy hello this guy must be a maintenance guy or a landscaper 
I don't know, there's work for everyone here in Asahi City. And also work for me because things do break sometimes. Alright, let's head over to my mansion which I have aptly called Akatsuki Manor and see what... Hey, are you lost? Should you be over there? Just checking to see that you're safe and everything's... Bombastic side eye. Ah, so I guess you're Criminal okay. Criminal offensive I... side And eye. if you need anything... Do you understand? Alright, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll go back to looking at my mansion. Whew. Sheesh. Alright, so I do have a couple of villagers working in my mansion. This one is working on a secret project. Please keep that a secret. Remember, all shoes must be taken off before entering the mansion. Here we have Captain Crunch helping me out with a few things that I need to get done around here. Remember, he is the elder from the Taiga village nearby. He's one of my most trusted villagers and we've been through a lot together. So it wasn't particularly difficult from- Oh god. Oh no. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go! As I've been walking about this city the entire time, you may have seen a few structures that you've never seen before. And that's because I had previously commissioned the villagers to build a barn and also a really nice greenhouse as you can see in front of me. So they worked on all of this and all I had to do was procure the materials required for them to get the job done. Let's take a look inside of the barn which was one of the first ones that I commissioned. I forgot to tell them how many spaces I would like, how many pens, but it looks like this should be enough for my horses and you know other animals that i may have and want to keep safe and well fed there's a lot of storage up here this is perfect this is exactly what i need so later on i'll definitely be bringing over kaede and kuromatsu because i'm pretty sure my horses are tired of being stuck in boats in the storage area also hi legoshi there you go legoshi has an entire house just to himself to live comfortably and that's the reason why I decided to build a barn for my horses and other animals, right? Next on the list is this really nice greenhouse. It has nothing in it, of course, because I'm the one who's going to be working on the interior. I really like how the structure came together. But the space inside is a bit lacking, so I might have to take the time to figure out how I'm going to fit all the plants that exist in this one space. On the opposite end, just nearby my mansion, we have this blacksmith... Blacksmith's place and it's probably built by this guy over here you know he's he's right here most likely admiring what he's done and he has done an amazing job because this is the tallest building and probably going to be the most useful one when it comes to tool making weapon making and upgrading now that i've shown you around the city it's time to go back to finish what we started in the nether last time the lava ducts, also known as the Super Mario Tunnels, need to be connected to the public nether fortress, so that's what I'll work on next. In order to keep myself safe, I'm going to have to block off all these corridors here, because the moment I turn my back to work on something, so many hostiles just keep spawning and attacking me from behind. I literally just died and I'm not going through that again. Anyway, this hole marks where I'm supposed to be digging downwards in order to connect up with the lava duct that is below, right? So essentially I'm making an exit into the fortress. Ah! I'm telling you the nether hates me so freaking much. All right, well, I'm here at the bottom where it connects to the tunnel. So I've already dug down all the way here. So now it's just time to fix it up nicely with the prismarine blocks. Please, I'm not doing this in the middle of a lava lake this time. Almost done. Ah! The fuck was that? Okay, so the top part of the tunnel exit requires some oxidized copper. Fortunately, I laid out this grid of copper in this open area here. Let me just grab these. Pop these blocks in right here. Uh, ah! Sometimes I feel like just spawn proofing this entire freaking fortress. What? What? What What are you going to do, huh? What What are you going to do? Can you Can you do anything to me at all? I... Oh, oh. Bro, really calm down. Anyway... The top of the tunnel is finished, let's check it out. I kept on theme as usual, and this is what it looks like. I actually had to dig out the entire surrounding area so that it can look more spacious around it and you can get a clear view of it so you are not ambushed by any nether fortress mobs. Another thing I built regarding the lava ducts on stream this time is this ground entrance right behind me. Yes, I do stream on Twitch, so follow me here so we can chill, chat and build. 
So this ground entrance is made for those who don't have Elytra to fly into the ceiling entrance and of course it's made spawn proof because that's the point of these lava ducts to be completely safe especially for those who can't quite defend themselves in this hell hole so for those who don't have Elytra like this this is for you. So now we officially have a crossroad so the lava ducts go in four directions this is to the ground area that is to another fortress number two that is nether fortress number one the one that i was struggling with and um, this is towards the guardian farm dump out point all right all in all it was a good day's work i don't know about you but i'm tired of seeing red let's head back to the overworld where it's nicer if you take a look at my map of the area i do have a bit of infrastructural development um in that regard so let's go check it out right now it's right behind the castle i decided i want to expand the road networks all the way to the back so that I have a general idea of how I want the city layout to expand in this direction and of course a bunch of that will be done on stream so make sure you follow me on Twitch I will be working on an entire forest the hello is someone there that sounded that sounded like a voice or a whisper it sounded hello well it can't be that the voice sounded like a human death the pig I haven't seen you in a long time guys do you remember him all right so i have a boat here to trap him in oh is something wrong with <gasps> i decided to give him a more personalized name tag bro i thought he died or he despawned or wandered off somewhere far away he's he, he's been here the entire time <laughs> that's so weird but at the same time i still don't know where that voice came from that's so strange i don't think rascatron's around either so anyway but i definitely heard something though so, how did it go? It went well, but I feel kind of bad for doing this. It feels like betrayal. I understand completely. He still doesn't trust you at all. That's to be expected, especially from what I remember. Based on what he said during our conversation, he really has no idea you've regained some of your memories. That's good. We should leave it that way for now. I'll keep pretending to be building something in my domain, just in case he sends someone else to keep an eye on me. That makes sense. I won't always be the one that comes by to check up on you. Right. In the meantime, try to locate the book in the place that I told you. Will do. It should be in there somewhere. The time has come for me to give my noble steeds a proper place to live. I'm sure y'all remember Kaede. And this is my second horse, Kuromatsu. We're finally getting you out of these boats. Let's let's see how this... How this... Oh! Alright, this will work. Let's go, Kuromatsu-kun. Your new home awaits. Alright, so I have the center pen reserved for my two horses because I want them to have ample space to move about freely. Especially since they've been trapped in boats for the majority of their lives. Woo! Let's go, Kaede-chan! Yo, I'm fast as fuck, boy! Bruh, I forgot how fast these horses were. I love them so much. And of course, I can't leave Gohin in a boat either. I have a place for him right in the barn. So you're saying the snowy peaks around your village has goats? How did I not know that? Best believe I'm finding one. And I have a feeling that it's definitely going to fit in the barn family that I have going on. That is, if I could find one. Yeah, I don't remember mountains having snow and being this high before. Oh! Emeralds. These are pretty hard to find so I'm definitely getting them. I've been roaming around for a while and all I see are those white bunnies and still nothing. I don't... I don't think this is the right place. I don't. Oh! Is this it? Is this it? Wow! Oh my god, they look so cool! So, Representative A.S. Snow was right. Look at their little beard. I wonder if they do anything like at all, you know, like. What? Ah! Oh my god, another one! Oh! Oh my goodness, they jumped so high! I'm definitely coming back for you. So, I brought back the second goat so that I can breed them both. This first one has no horns right now because he kept trying to ram me. Then he rammed into a tree and dropped these horns that make noises like that. So it seems that's their purpose. I'm just going to breed these two right here and see what and see. Oh my goodness, it's so small. So Streebog Marsh from the swamp village sent me over back to the village that I recruited him from because he saw how happy I was about the goats and told me that there would be something in his village that I would find interesting. Though he didn't specify what it was, I guess I'm supposed to look around. Now that I think about it, I didn't even get any of these trees and stuff that are here in this. This is a new biome, right? So these are the roots of the mangrove trees. Yeah, 
I guess, I guess those little hanging things are the equivalent of saplings. I really don't know what I'm looking for. But maybe, maybe it was the mangroves that I, I had to collect the saplings for. Yes, I'll definitely do that while I look around. This place is really muddy, you know. And with all these roots, it's very hard. See, even this villager. I can't even see the village from here. I guess he, he must be lost as well. So maybe... Ooh! Frogs! Let me see where he's going. He's probably going in that direction. All right, I'll just follow him out. But frogs! Oh my goodness. I, thank goodness I came prepared. I, I made sure I brought leads just in case. All right, I'm getting... Where is it? I'm getting frogs! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, they're so cool. <gasps> Ooh, they jump high as well. I guess we got two jumping animals. It's been a while since I've been here over at the raid den. For those who don't remember, I used to trigger raids here so that I can emerald farm. And over there is where I used to measure the speed of the horses that I used to tame. But the main reason I'm here is because of that. This naturally spawned pink sheep that I got and named a long time ago has been wandering here all its life. It's time for me to take it to the barn. More animals. I'm also curious to know if anything has changed in the old swamp biomes. Especially since we have mangrove swamps now. I can safely say that nothing has changed. The terrain is the same. This is the same ravine that's beside the witch hut. The witch is still there. Remember that time we came to interrogate the witch? Come out witches! Come out! Tell me where the pillagers outpost is! I swear I cringe when I rewatch that video log. Maybe I should build a swamp village here since it's close. <gasps> frogs? Frogs! More frogs! And these ones are different in color. These ones are orange, right? The other, the other two that I got were white. Yep, I'm taking them home. Quick update. While I was trying to take the frogs home with me, I think something went wrong with the portal because only one of them made it through. The same thing happened with the white frogs. For some reason, the second one didn't make it through. But fortunately, I was able to breed them while I was at Raskatron's domain. And I have something to show you over here. When it hatched and grew up, it became a green frog. So it seems like these frogs, the colors, we have Toby, we have Philip, and we have the green one, Sergeant Keroro over here. It seems like the temperature is what actually makes them the color that they are. Because I don't trust portals right now with transporting these frogs, I'm going to leave them right here in the nether for the time being. I'll feed them, I'll take care of them, but only until I can take them safely home with me. I decided to bring the goats in the barn as well and covered here with glass because they do jump high and they will escape the fences. So we have all three of them in here, at least until I can get a bigger space for them. The naturally spawned pink sheep, however, pink sheesh and pig sheep. Unfortunately, I won't be able to take them into the barn because we're in a taiga biome and I don't want them to be eaten up by wolves, not at all. So they're staying here until I can figure out something safe for them. Ugh. I guess the time has come. Don't take it personal. But this, this is something I must do. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. I'll see you guys next time.